I want you to give a warm welcome for Pastor McKenna as she comes to speak. Thank you. Yeah, this is a very warm welcome. I appreciate it. Um, so how are you guys doing? That was so weak. How are you guys doing? Horrible. Okay. What's one word? Shout out one word to describe your day today. Ready? One, two, three. Boring. I heard a couple words down there. I had to pull my stand down because a very, very interesting special person put it all the way up for me. All right. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so my name again, McKenna. I uh, run our Holidaysburg campus uh, with Refuge. I graduated from Bellwood. Is there any Bellwood representation in those one? Okay. A couple. Yeah, too. So I graduated from Bellwood. I'm from this area, right? There's a couple things I just wanted, you know, to mention to you guys real quick. I, just some things about myself, right? So I like some good food. Is anyone a foodie in this house? Foodie, yep. Like some good food. I hear a clap back there, right? And I'm a foodie, right? I like anything that is competitive. Is there any competitive people? I just like anything that I can win at, right? I know a lot of people raising their hands, just really competitive. Anything you can win, you know, you're all about it, right? And so also, I know this is a very unpopular opinion. I might get, you know, booed for this. But I think that cats are the superior animal compared to dogs. No. I know Pastor Mike is going to disagree with that. Anyone like a cat, like a cat person? Cat lady? Yeah, a couple people? Okay. Yeah, no? All right. So I guess I'm alone on that one too. But, you know, it's okay, you know? So I'm excited to share what I uh, feel like God has laid on my heart tonight. Um, and so have, have you guys ever heard the phrase, uh, like you, someone talks the talk, but they don't walk the walk? Yeah. Have you guys heard that phrase before? You know what that means? So basically, you know, it's somebody who says, you know, they're like good at this sport or like they can sing really good or they can play an instrument, but then you go to like watch them play or something and they're like actually trash, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah? No? Okay. No one knows what I'm talking about. So, right, it's someone who says there's a certain way, but they actually don't back it up with what they say and what they do. And so I think sometimes we can kind of take that on in our walk with Jesus, in our faith, right? We can, t we can come here on Wednesday nights. We can talk the talk. We can say, you know, hey, I, I follow Jesus. I'm a Christian. Like, I do this thing. But, like, does do you back it up with the way that you live? Do you... Do you also walk the walk, right? Do you talk the talk of being a Christian and following Jesus, but do you, do you back it up with the way that you live, right? And so if you want to throw that, that first scripture up for me, we're going to be uh, mainly kind of in Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Everyone say race. Race. I, you got to work with me here because I ask a lot of participation from, from you guys. Everyone say race one more time. You're running your race. Ready? Go. Race. All right. So run, the ra or run the, with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Right, so it says that when we walk with Jesus, we, it's kind of like running a race. But really, I think it's more like a marathon, right? Who knows life can be really hard sometimes. It's hard. It's more like a marathon than this race. It's long. It's taxing, right? It's really hard. And so we're running this race. We're all running a race in our life, right? We're all on a journey. We're all going somewhere. But we can all be running at different things. We can all be running separate races, going at a different goal and a different finish line. And so, but it's important, that race is important because it determines our future, right? It determines where we're going, where we're going to end up. And so what I want us to think about tonight and just kind of grapple with in our mind is we're all on a race towards something, but is it the right thing? Is it the thing that we should be running after? Is it the right path that we're on? And so that's what I want us to kind of think about tonight. And some other questions to kind of get your mind spinning on what race you're running. But what are, what are you pursuing, right? What are you going after? What's the number one goal in your life? Or even do you have a goal? Is there anything that you're running towards? Or are you just kind of, you know, walking around not knowing, you know, where you're going? Do you have a goal? Where are you running? 
And what do you think would make you like the most happy in life? You know, if I were to just get this, you know, then my life would be fine. Like I would, I would be happy. So I have, so what I do with my holidays for campus sometimes is I ask you guys questions and I give you the opportunity to talk with it or talk about the question with your neighbor. So that's what we're going to do a couple times tonight. And so we have our first question. Uh, they're going to pop up on the screen. It's what does culture tell us to pursue after? And what does it, so this is kind of like the same question worded two different ways. What does culture tell us to pursue after? And what does what does it say will make us truly happy? All right, so uh, go ahead and turn for like a minute and talk about this question. All right, so what are, what are some things, shout them out, that you guys talked about? Money? What? Fame and money, yeah, those are two big ones. What else? Love? Anyone else on this side? No? Going once, no? Okay, yes. What did you say? Loyalty, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to, let's go ahead and throw those verses back up uh, again. So I'm going to read them again, and we're going to talk a little bit about these again. Uh, if you want to put those, yep, there we go. It says, therefore, since we are, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of influence, or a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. So there's three things that I want to pull out of this that can help us, you know, run the right race that we should be running that Paul's describing here. So one, it says, fix your eyes on Jesus right? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Jesus is the reason that we're here, right? If there wasn't, if Jesus didn't exist, there would be no reason for us to be here, right? That's what our faith is built on. And when we look to him while we're running our race, he will not let us go astray, right? So we're fixing our eyes. That's an intentional, you know, turn of our head to look at something else, right? So fix our eyes, meaning it's that we should find Jesus, the most beautiful thing in our life. And if we do, the things of the, so the things of the world try to pull us a different way, right? It's just like we talked about earlier with that question. The world is going to try to pull your eyes in a different direction, right? Does it, you guys agree with me? Yeah, there's going to do that. So you have to intentionally make sure we're pursuing Jesus and we're turning our eyes towards him, Right, And so we have to make up our mind to say no um, to the things that are trying to pull out our attention so that we can look at him. And so when something tries to make us lose sight of Jesus, we make the decision to say no and keep our eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he is the most valuable thing that we can have on this earth. So another phrase in those verses, it says, throw off what hinders us. So it's another intentional, you know, action. You know, you're throwing something off. You're not just, you know, walking along your day and hope, hoping that, like, you know, that you're, whatever is going to trip you up is just falling off, right? It's an intentional throwing off of something that shouldn't be in our lives. So when we follow Jesus, he gives us a new identity. We become quite literally a new person because you know, we follow the same suit. Jesus died and rose again so we can have a new life, a new identity. And so that new identity should change what we do. You know, what we think um, are the actions that we have, how we treat other people. It quite literally should change who we are because we have this new identity. And so the things that try to might come into your life that aren't part of that new identity that you have, it should be thrown off so it doesn't trip us up in the race and the marathon that we're winning so that we can reach our finish line, right? So we should be so determined to run the race God has set before us that we do whatever it takes to say no and to throw off what's going to get in the way of that race, and when we keep our eyes on Jesus, he gives us the power to say no to what isn't God's good for our lives, right? Because we can't do that on our own. We can't, you know, throw it off, the, that old identity. We can't throw it off on our own. We need help from Jesus, right? We need him to give us the ability to do that. 
And so it can be so easy to let temptation and sin throw us off in this race that we're running. But we have to deter be determined again to say no to those other things and continue to run our race after Jesus. The last phrase in those verses I wanted to highlight is, it says, run with perseverance. Right? So life is hard. Things are going to get in the way. But, but Paul says you should run with perseverance, with determination to get to that finish line, to run the race that God has set you on. Um, and so, it's, you know, we shouldn't give up, right, even when things might get in the way. So what you do with your life every single day matters. Every single day adds up to make a difference in your future, right, good or bad, right? You're running your race today, and are you going to decide to make good choices to go towards Jesus, or are you going to go astray, right? Today matters. And sometimes, you know, we're always looking to the future, right? You know, when am I going to be 18 years old, right? When am I going to be 13? When am I going to be able to graduate, right? We're always kind of looking towards the next thing, right? Is that anyone else with me? I know I was like that when I was your age. And so, but I want to let you know tonight, today matters. Your day today matters. What you do today matters, you know, because it all adds up into the race that you're running, right? So don't waste your life. Don't waste today. Don't throw your day away by not giving it to Jesus and letting him change you, right? And so God has also given us other people to help run our race too, right? Every single adult leader that's in this room wants to see you run your race well and wants to see you succeed, Right, so we're here, we could be doing a whole bunch of other things, but we're here because we want to see you succeed, right? And so I have another question for you guys. So go ahead and turn to your neighbor, and we're going to and ask each other this one. Have you ever heard these verses before? So the, the verses about running your race, have you heard them before? What do you want to achieve in life, and what does that say about the race you are running? All right, All right go ahead and finish up your answers. So a lot of times, you know, we can say that we're running towards one race, right? We're running towards one goal, but sometimes our actions show that we're running towards something else. And so our journey, oh wait, actually, let's pull up James 1, 12 up on the screen. We're going to read this. So it says, so this is in James 1, 12, right? So it says, blessed is the one who preserves perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Right, so our journey with Jesus, it starts now. We're running it every single day, but it doesn't come co into completion until heaven. And so what you're choosing today, the choices that you make today, will determine your reward in heaven. You know, will you choose to run the race towards Jesus? Will you choose to run the, and be in the race and persevere for the long haul, right? Is that something that you're determined that you're going to do or not, right? And so what will you do in those circumstances when things try to get in the way and try to push you off the path? What are you going to do? Are you going to say no? Are you going to throw off those things and continue to look to Jesus, fix your eyes on him, and run the race that he has called you to? Or are you not going to do that, right? And we do mess up sometimes. How do you know? How many of you know that we mess up? right? We mess up sometimes, we blow it, right? And that's okay because God always forgives us when, you know, we make a mistake. But what matters in those situations is our heart, right? Are we intentionally trying to mess up and just kind of, you know, have a whatever attitude about it? Or are, is our heart, you know, actually in it and, you know, grieved by what we did, right? And so, our hearts are what matters in running the race. Are we committed? Is our heart committed to running the race for the long haul? Uh, and so what we do today matters. And you're running your race right now, whether you realize it or not. And so what we do, so you might say that you're running th this race towards Jesus, right? But what will, what will determine the answer to these questions isn't just what you say, right? Because anyone can talk the talk. But it's how you back it up with the way that you live and what you do. So if you wanna, so we're gonna continue to read two more verses in James. James 1, 22 through 24. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away 
and immediately forgets what he looks like. So James is saying that someone who reads the Bible, who knows who Jesus is, might come to a a weekly youth group every single night and hear about who he is. Um, Someone who does all of those things but doesn't change their life because of it is like someone who looks in a mirror and just forgets, walks away and just forgets everything they heard, whatever they looked at, looked like, right? And so have, have any of you like had someone come up to you and say like, hey, like, do I have something on my teeth? Like, is there any something on my face, right? And you try to like help them get it off. Has that ever, anyone ever asked that to you before? Right? And then it's like really frustrating because there's something on their face and you're trying to tell them where it's at and it's just like popping up different places on their face, right? They're not getting it off. They're just kind of moving it around. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, yes, thank you. I like some feedback. Thank you, Pastor Micah. Um, And so there's a, because there's a, they didn't use a mirror, right? But there's a purpose to a mirror. It's to see yourself. And there's a purpose to the spiritual mirror that James is talking about. This is a mirror that we look into the Bible that instructs us in what God says is good good for us. So James is saying that when we read the Bible and then go away and don't do anything about what we read or what we heard, our faith is pointless. Our faith in Jesus must be backed up with a life change. Following Jesus, obeying him, choosing his good for our lives should back up and is evidence of what we believe in our hearts. And so our life as Christians, they should look different, right? That's the point, because people will be able to see Jesus through us. That's the whole point, right? And so doing is a response to hearing. So we don't just hear, but there's also a doing response that we have to have. And when we know Jesus, read his word, and are committed to him, the natural response should be for us to do what it says. But it's not out of an obligation. Like it's God is a dictator and he's telling us, you know, this is what you need to do. We're like, I'm going to swallow you up in the earth, right? It's not that kind of mentality. It's out of love, right? We respond to Jesus by doing because we love him. It's a love response. Because God loves us perfectly, right? There's nothing that we could ever do to make him love us less. There's not anything that we, we're not going to do that's going to make him love us less. There's not anything we're going to think that's going to make him love us left, less. He loves us perfectly. And I think a lot of times it's so hard for us to understand that because we're surrounded by a bunch of, of people that love imperfectly. So it's hard for us to comprehend a perfect love. Right? But it's true. God loves you perfectly no matter what you do, no matter what you think, no matter how you act. And so I have another question for you guys. I think this might be the last one. But turn to your neighbor and ask each other, do you think most people obey God out of, like, duty or because they have to or out of love and why? So about a minute to answer that question. So I think... If we want to bring it back up front, I think a real relationship with Jesus starts from love, right? It comes from a motivation of love. And so we see that in John 4. We don't, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but to summarize it, in John 4, um, there was a situation that happened. Uh, Bethany talked about it if you guys were at Daughters Conference. But there's a woman at the well. She's a Samaritan. And Jesus, you know, comes up and talks to her. Which, first of all, is even crazy to begin with because Jesus is a Jew. The woman is a Samaritan. And those two people groups don't mix very well, right? They're not supposed to associate with each other. And so this woman was even living in, you know, a bunch of sin, right? Jesus calls her out and says, hey, Hey, like you've had, you know, four or five wives and the, or four or five husbands and the one that you're with right now, you're not even married to, right? She's living in this deep sin. And what's crazy to me in this story, it's one of my favorite stories, is that the result of what the re- result of this conversation was. She was a sinful woman who ended up changing her ways because of her encounter with Jesus. She encountered Jesus' unconditional love to her. Be, even despite of what she was doing and the life that she was living. And she started a personal relationship with Jesus after her encounter, right? She had a life-altering response to him. And it resulted in her life changing forever for the good. 
And so she put off the sin that didn't line up with this new identity that she has. You know, we've been talking about identity in Colossians the past week or so. She realized the new person that she was, and she decided to take away everything that didn't line up with that new identity. It had a change in her life and what she did. She started to make new decisions. And she brought others along to Jesus too and said, hey, come see the man that changed my life. Right? Because doing, doing the religious thing, just to do it, isn't the answer to running the race and change. But having a relationship with Jesus, encountering his love continually is the answer to running that race successfully and meeting that finish line that God has called you to, to go to. Right? The key to change is having continual encounters with God. And this grows our love for him gives us the ability to change and the desire as well. And so how do you follow Jesus? How do you, how do you run, run this race for the long haul and make sure that you're running towards the right finish line? First, you fall in love with Jesus more and more every day. And so, you know, three words to help you kind of remember what that could look like is reading the Bible, right, talking to him and listening. So... I went to um, a really good college in New Jersey, and before I went there, I was just doing the religious thing, right? It's kind of what you do when you grow up in a family that, you know, church is the thing that you do every week, right? And it's not until I went to college that I encountered God's love and my life changed. And I think that you guys have the, I believe and I know that you guys have the same opportunity right now in this moment. Don't wait until you go to college, right? Because you're running your race today. Don't wait. And how else can you run this race for the long haul, right? You surround yourself with friends who love him. You know, you come here and you're surrounded by these people on a Wednesday night, but then you go to school and the people that you hang out with are the ones deterring you and pulling you in a different direction. Right? Surround yourself. Find people who also can encourage you and push you along in the right direction. And you also have so many, you know, adult leaders here that, again, want to see you succeed and run this race and win and go to the right finish line. Use them. We're here because we love you and when we want to see you succeed. And so when we love Jesus more and more, It makes the change that we should have that James talks about more natural and he gives us the ability, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to want to change, right? He gives us a new heart to help us choose his good. He gives us, gives us his spirit to help us have the ability to change and he helps us make new choices that line up with our new identity. Maybe, you know, you love being here. You love coming on Wednesday night, right? But you don't feel like you actually know who Jesus is, right? You don't feel like you have that personal relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you do, and you, and maybe you do, but there's always more for you. There's always deeper to go. And he loves you, and he wants to see you get to know him more. Learning to love Jesus and encountering him is the most important thing in life. Because when you do, everything else falls into place, right? You'll want to change. You'll want to run his race, and he'll give you the ability to do it all. And so tonight, I really believe is your opportunity to to deepen your love for Jesus, to experience his love for you even even more. And it starts now. You're running your race now, so I encourage you, don't wait, right? There's always more. And loving is... Loving Jesus and following, falling in love with him is, you know, the key to running the right race that God has called you to. So um, I want us to take, you know, we did this at the beginning with Pastor Micah, but I really want us, want you guys to take the opportunity just to connect with God on your own again, right? So, but all centered around love. So maybe you don't know, you're here and you're like, I don't, like, I don't know if I've really experienced or encountered God's love. You know, I want to tell you today could be your day, right? Maybe it won't come right now, but it could come later, right? So I want you guys to either take take time to ask God to show you how much he loves you or ask him to help you love him more, all right? So maybe that'll look like, you know, in a second, you take time 
to just bow your heads in your seats and be like, God, you know, I don't know, you know, your love, right? I want to know your love even deeper. I want to experience you and encounter you just like that lady did thousands of years ago, right? Or maybe you, you bow your head and you say, Lord God, I, I might, I love you, but I need help showing that to other people. I need help loving you even more and letting that come out through the way that I live and what I do. Okay, so go ahead, take a moment, bow your heads. Either ask God or both, ask God to show you how much he loves you and ask him to help you love him more for the next like three minutes. God, I thank you that, that you love us. Lord, that there's nothing that we could ever do to change the truth that you love us. There's nothing that we're not gonna do that you want us to do that is gonna change the truth that you love us. God, I, I thank you for that truth. God, I pray that it would just become real in our lives, Lord God, that that truth, that love would just sink deeper. Lord, that right now we would just sense and feel your love just wash all over us, God. I pray that you would just help us to love you more as a response, Lord God. I pray that you would just show us what that means, Lord God, to walk out. God, I thank you for every single person in this room, Lord God. I pray that you would just... Um, continue to just reveal this truth in our hearts, Lord, throughout this week. Lord God, I pray that tonight wouldn't just be something that we come to do because we want to, Lord God, but that tonight would just be a marker in our lives, Lord God, that tonight on Wednesday night was the time that I encountered God for real, Lord God, and that it changed my life just like the woman at the well. I thank you for who you are, Lord God. I thank you for what you're doing and what you're speaking in our hearts right now, God. In your name, amen.